Welcome back to RimWorld. This has been a weird series. It's not been my strongest series, I will admit. It doesn't help that I thought I knew how to play RimWorld, but since I last played, obviously so much has changed that I basically had to relearn everything. I think if I went back to RimWorld at this stage, I would be okay at it, especially from some of the sort of off-camera games I've been playing. Um, my, my early game is much, much better. And honestly, I'm a big fan of playing in planes. Like, planes and rivers seem to be just the ultimate RimWorld strategy now. No more mountains or anything like that. Just because rivers are so important on the on the gameplay purposes. Not only for, like, mod-related things, like the fishing mod, but also just because of the whole water mill generator. That, that seems very essential to the early game. So, I think if I ever come back to it, I'll definitely change my playstyle quite significantly. I'm also, I, I will admit, I don't particularly like some aspects of the the, uh, the Call of Cthulhu, Rim of Madness style mods that we've got enabled. Don't like the storyteller. I don't like some of the creatures that spawn in, especially the deep ones that have the constant mind-altering effects. Th there are parts of it I can't personally get on with, but that's my problem with the mod. That, that I think the mod itself is is quite well made. It could do with some balancing here and there, but I, I have some significant issues with it because I feel like it changes the way Rim World works to some extent. Anyway... That being said, I have the ultimate endgame goal in mind. With each of the gods, their final spell that you unlock is a game-ending spell. So, normally in RimWorld, the way that the game ends is either A, uh, you die, or B, you build a spaceship and leave. Or, I suppose, uh, A, A.2, you get on a spaceship and leave. Uh, the one that spawns on the world somewhere. So, I think that's going to be my plan. We're going to get to the highest level of, we're going to become Hasta's Chosen, and then we'll unlock a very, very endgame spell, which allows us to transport the entire colony to Hastor's realm. That's going to be the plan. I like that idea. It's something different. It also give a nice natural end to things. We didn't really get to see a lot of, the, obviously this is going to be quite a, quite a while away yet, but there are a few things that we haven't been able to achieve. Like, I want to do the whole genetic engineering thing, but that's such endgame. That, that I feel like it's designed for your more traditional remote experience, maybe playing on a slightly lower difficulty, something along those lines. Um, especially not when you've got all the other madness mods enabled as well, and some more difficulty mods. So, I would like to check out the genetic rim stuff, the, the more genetic altering stuff, maybe in combination with glitter tech and industrialization in a second mod pack. That could be interesting. RimWorld might go on break after this series, though. I'm not entirely sure. I I'll, have to I'll have to see how I feel about it, because obviously this series has been basically just me learning how to play RimWorld again, rather than actually achieving half the things I wanted to do, which was a little bit of a shame. But now that I've done it, it would be a shame not to go back to it, if that makes sense. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that at a different point. Still got a lot more to do with this colony. First thing I changed was I allowed the whole inbox just basically full access to everywhere. I figured, why not? There's, there's no downside to it. They didn't have access to these farms. They couldn't haul the bamboo or the, or the lentils or anything like that. So I've, I've fixed that system. All we've got to do, essentially our win condition now is just building up favor with Hasta. So the ways we do that, obviously sacrifices. So we can sacrifice um, vegetables, meats, or meals. In the, uh, in the offerings, I should say. We can offer vegetable or plants, meats, or meals. Then obviously we can sacrifice animals. But I'm not going to sacrifice rosebud or patches. I feel like at this point in the game... Those guys are more than welcome to come to Carcosa with us. Then, of course, we can sacrifice humans as well, which is definitely something we're going to be doing more of. We just got to wait for more raids, that type of thing. Turns out, these cats, these guardians, these immortal guardians, are actually the creatures. So, we, with while watching Hastor, have summoned these Biaki, these sort of weird, uh, I don't even know how you describe them, uh, dinosaur type pterodactyl things. With. If you worship Bast instead, his Biaki equivalent spell is to summon these guardians. So we got very, very lucky. So I assume there is a way that you could have random uh, Chthonian demons join your colony or something like that. That would be pretty cool. Anyway, we've got a lot to do. I'm going to quickly take a look through the research tree, make sure everything's working with that. Because we do have some mods that are still conflicting here and there. Make sure everything's working and then we can dive straight into it. So I did have to research the whole, uh, reset I should say, the whole research tree once again. So we're currently researching geothermal power because our current power supply is obviously crap. We've got two solar panels. Um, we're not using much power, like I said, but it would be nice to tap into these geothermal vents. This one we can use to power turrets. There's absolutely no reason not to power turrets for that. And one thing we have to do, which one of you guys thankfully pointed out, is remove this so they're not shooting, obviously, by their own embrasures. That would be a bit crap if we basically gave the enemy some, uh, some free cover there. So I'll go ahead and tell them to deconstruct them, rebuild rebuild those so that they're no longer embrasures. These things are so horrible. They're just really gross. They're, they're just genuinely disgusting creatures. Um, let's see here. So what we want to do 
is have them so they follow Master during field work. So you can definitely follow you. It's a real shame no one's got higher animals because these guys would be... Like, I like to send Rosebud off to follow someone else, like Eagle Through, for example. But because they're bonded, if if I give Rosebud to Eagle, Biggest Dickus is going to be upset. Um, similarly with Yankee Danky, I might just do it because it's going to make Eagles... Oh, I'll say that. She's only researching, though. Fine, all right. It's a little bit annoying, the whole bond system, but there we go. Anyway, um, this one is follow them when they're drafted. We don't want them to do that, but we will have them... I won't have Byaki 1 follow Biggest Dickus just because I would rather that... Anybody was allowed, like Grantly Grimble right now is obviously trying to climb aboard Byaki 2 there. If we set them to follow their master, it will stop any Ranima following them. So a couple of episodes ago, I floated the idea of maybe adjusting the storyteller and difficulty depending on a dice roll to add that truly random feel to things. Because Randy Random, although claiming to be random, isn't really that random, let's be honest, he's just difficult. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to roll uh, a D8. We're going to roll it for the storyteller. Then we're also going to roll it for difficulty, whereby 1 is peaceful, 2, 3 is builder, 4, 5 is medium, 6, 7 is rough, and 8 is savage. That way we've got the lowest chance of getting peaceful and savage, and then the same chance of getting builder as we do with rough, and then naturally medium is obviously the uh, the, the middle result there. So that could be interesting. I also, I, I'm doing it that way, so obviously we don't have equal chance to get peaceful as we do with Savage, because both of those, either one of those will either make it boring, or just kill the game entirely, so I'd like to avoid that if possible. So, let me bring up my fantastic dice rolling app, which I definitely haven't just googled in the past five minutes. We're gonna roll, I tested that it worked, ignore that. We're gonna roll a d8, obviously the storytellers are numbered here, one to eight, so this is the storyteller roll, and we'll see who we end up with. Oh god. Seven? Which one's seven? Um... Okay, so we've got this one. Uh, Serenid Sadistic. Oh, that sounds incredible. The Rogue Federation Peacekeeper Corps commander Serenid has a mountain of painful stories due to her former job's nature. In her stories, characters, comma, characters usually face their doom after writhing in ag agony of endless pain. She loves these kind of stories. She would generate lots of small, annoying incidents, but less raids. Hey, that's perfect. That's really what I love, small, annoying incidents. Right, now we'll roll for difficulty. Like I said, one peaceful, eight savage, and then incrementally every two uh, integers after one. So let's give it a go. Eight-sided dice. Roll. Seven. What seven? Oh god, that's fucking rough, isn't it? Oh my lord. Alright then, so we're going to be playing with this lady on rough. Giggity. Good. Alright team, this is probably going to be a massacre. Let's see how we do. Lots of small incidents. So what does that mean? That means we need to make sure the hospital is set up. That means we. I can imagine we're going to get lots of things like our electrical co conduit faults. How many firefighters have we got? Everybody's a firefighter, so that's fine. We're going to get things like, um, minor faults. It's going to be just like diseases, surely. Diseases, incidents like, I don't think a poison ship would be counted as a minor incident, but maybe that's just me. Breakdowns as well. Breakdowns could be pretty bad because we don't have any means of fabricating new components. Um, yeah, not sure how this will play out. It's going to be interesting either way. Let's keep an eye on things. Maybe more mental breakdowns. Maybe more, uh, drug addictions? We haven't got any drugs in storage, though, from what I know. Um, we've got... Oh, we've got three Yayo. Oh, shit, maybe we should burn that. Alright, burn the Yayo. Um, I'm not risking it. Fuck it. Do forever. Alright, Eagle through, or who's nearby? Yeah, Eagle, you can you can just go ahead and burn this Yayo for me. Thank you, I appreciate that. Right, problem solved? There we go, okay. Just want to make sure that we're going to be completely safe for this uh, this next aspect of the playthrough. This is a good idea. If we ever do a new series, I might even just do a new series based entirely around the random nature of uh, the dice rolls. Like, true random. More random than, uh, more random than Randy Random, anyway. Alright, we've got so much bamboo now. My, my wood problems have been solved via this tiny little uh, blue plantation that we have here. That's pretty great. Um, all the bedrooms are built. We're just waiting on some more stone to actually carve out the walls. We've got... And obviously, we're just waiting on smoothing some floors here as well. And we didn't need wood for something else here. We need wood, like, here. So, the bamboo should be automatically cut into wood. Okay, so they've just harvested it and left it to rot. That's understandable. I don't know why you wouldn't. I feel like what we could do, if we really want to maximize the end game, the Hasta ultimate spell to drown the whole... Or send the whole colony to Carcosa, it would make sense to be getting the most meat and the most... Um, the, the most plants as possible, because you can offer those up on the altar, right? Apparently, it takes a long time to get there, and from my own single-player testing, can confirm it does take quite some time to get there. So, I'm thinking, let's... How are we going to do this? 
I'm thinking like start a giant farm because I imagine it's based on nutrition value. That's that's my only guess. So it's based on the nutrition value of the plants or the meat or the meals that you sacrifice. We could just build a big farm, you know, farm for the old gods. Seems a bit odd, but we could give it a go. What does Hasta look like? Oh, he's like a he's like a goat man. He's like a deer man, like Rudolph. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, is there a way to tell actually what these sacrifices entail? So if we go offering, if we go plants, uh, meat medium by Igor, it doesn't really say. Does it not give us any indication to the? Oh, there we go. Hang on. But based on its nutrition values, right? So we want to be making the most nutritional food or growing the most nutritional food. But it's also going to be based on the growth time as well. That'll have an effect on it. Huh. I'm going to have to do some maths now, aren't I? Good God, I hate maths. That's why I left university. Right. All right. So what have we got? We've got, um, let's just take a look. Brief look here. I'm going to also go through this list so that you guys can tell me if I'm wrong here. Um, 0 0.2 nutrition, 0 0.18. And those obviously grow very fast and they grow everywhere. Um, 0 0.2. 0 0.25 for pincushion cactuses. Right. But how long does it grow though? Takes 2.5 days to grow. Rice takes 24 days. Oh, th wow. Okay, so pink cushion cactuses are actually better. Um, fastest growth time, most nutrition. That seems good to me. Um, olive takes 80 days, but they also don't disappear. Obviously, growing an olive tree. So, naturally, that will keep regrowing. I'm not sure how long the actual the, the, the growing time is, though, between olive yields. Um, we've got corn, or hay grass, I should say, which is obviously pretty irrelevant. We've got corn, which is 11.3 days, nutrition 3. So that's the most nutritious so far, but it takes, what, triple the time to grow than that cactus? Almost five times as much? Yeah, maybe not. Um, we've then got... Okay, so that's not really valuable. That's not valuable. Alright, so I think I'm basically just going to go all in pincushion cactuses, eh? 2.5 days, yields 3. Oh man, I've got to consider the yield as well. Oh, god damn it. Unless that's nutrition per... That's, that's got to be nutrition per crop, right? Fuck. Oh, the maths. Alright, let me, let me try and work this out. I have done some science and discovered which vegetal is the greatest vegetal to grow. Let me show you its features. Let me show you its features. Here we go. So, um, from the top... What I've done is I've taken the time to grow the yield and the nutrition, and then to work out how much it gives per day, you do the yield times the nutrition over the time it takes to grow, and that gives you the daily amount of nutrition. Very simple stuff. Now, you could always, you know, work out the amount of growable land you've got and add in the tilled tile bonuses and the work speeds and all that crap, because obviously you're not going to be able to farm and harvest an entire field in one day. You could do that if you're weird. So, I've also taken some scientific notes. Right, so, in terms of nutrition per day, corn... Absurdly good. It's, it's 1.1 nutrition per day. Um, compared to something, say, like rice, which I've been growing, which is 0.18. Useless. Like, absolutely god-awful. So, assuming you've already got a food source available to you, always grow corn in Rimworld, turns out. Really, really good stuff. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch to corn. It takes 11.3 days to grow. Now, obviously, the risk associated with that blight, um, if you're playing on a non-permanent summer map, you could have, um, you could start your crop too late and it could die of, of cold, basically. You might not have time to actually finish the growth. All of that, all that stuff for us, it doesn't matter because we're playing on permanent summer. We've also got the fields, which are going to make them grow slightly faster. Um, we've also got plenty of farmers. We've also got hauling bots, which are going to slightly make the process quicker as well. Basically, what I'm saying is Hasta's going to get a shit ton of corn, whether or not he likes it. Um, so there are my scientific results. Thank you for, uh, thank you for being a part of this. So, um... Right then, we've got enough bamboo, 1500 bamboo, do we really have enough bamboo? Uh, fuck the rice, get rid of this, get rid of the rice, we're going back to corn. Alright, time for some corn, let's, um, lentils are good though, so one of my notes I took there was meat, lentils count as meat, which is good, because that means we don't have to go out hunting, what I am going to do though is basically just, basically just do the following, right? I'm going to say, how much heal root have we got? We do need heal root, I will admit. 63. So, I'm going to shrink the heal root zone down significantly. We're going to instead, because let's be honest, that's going to grow pretty quickly, right? Because we've got these tilled fields. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, it's time. Hasta needs his corn. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to just gonna smooth off the entire base. Do we have, um, do we have the ability to lay a stone? Have I researched that yet? I'm going to tidy this up in a second because this is an absolute state. Just gonna do that. 
Uh, we're just basically going to say every farmable, farmable square is going to be farmed. Uh, let's just not remove the mountain, though. That's not, that's not, generally crops don't grow well under mountains. So let's get rid of that. There we go, that's better. Right. I'll tidy this up very briefly. Then we'll replace all of this with, with corn. Because, um, obviously we're going to get the most kickback from that. That's going to be the most valuable to Hasta. The king in yellow does love his corn. And then we'll just set up a farming racket. And it's going to be great. The rest of the series we can spend farming and doing nothing else. That doesn't seem like a good idea in hindsight. I'll leave the lentils because the lentils are obviously pretty good in terms of um, saving us from having to hunt. And then we'll just go ahead and replace all of this with delicious, delicious corn. He, he's done it. He's a genius. Give me the world's largest corn farm. Right, expand zone. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, we need, we need all of this. Wait, we can till the, we can till that area? Guess I'll just have to wait for some of it to be tilled first. Alright, just till around this kill box. Let's turn death into life. Did that, did they not say that in Lion King? I don't remember. Someone, someone look it up. Someone go watch Lion King for me. Alright, let's, let's do that. There we go, that's looking nice. Now we can just go like that because it's, a, it's an attached growth area, so you don't have to worry about replacing the lentils. Um... I'd also like to expand it over here, but I feel like it's just going to start a second growing zone. It is. We've got one growing zone, yes, but how about a second? There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and expand that out as well. This one might be a bit far out of the way, so it might be a bit of a waste of time. There will be certain small squares that will not, won't be attached that will just grow potatoes. So I'll just go ahead and delete those because those aren't going to be relevant. I'll also cancel so we're not completely wasting our time. All right. Operation Kill America with Cornstarch is underway. I mean, um, please Hasta with Cornstarch is underway. I might even go ahead and cancel these because... Fuck them. I mean, they're going to look hideous. They're in completely the wrong area of the map. There we go. All right. Good work, team. Let's also dig this one up. This is going to be so good. Icarus is out there tilling the fields, preparing for the great corn god in the sky. Corn for the corn god. We will make a corn throne. No more... Can, is, there a, is there a corn furniture mod? I'm definitely on board if that's the case. I feel like it would definitely lend itself well to what we're about to do. I don't think the bone church is really nice in terms of aesthetics. Uh, it looks kind of ugly. I would like to dig a better church. I'm tempted to also dig out a big area here and build a bigger church. Um, mainly because this is a, a fucking eyesore. I'm going to be completely honest with you. So, how many bones have we got? Should we got an absolute stack of bones? Oh, God. my uh, That made me almost vomit. Uh, we've got shit tons of bones. Alright, so what we'll do is uh, we'll dig out Operation Massive Church. Um, we'll build it. Yeah, I'm going to build it here. I'm going to build the main entrance to the church here just because we can grab that uh, compacted machinery there. And then we'll do it like seven blocks that way. And then we'll do it seven blocks this way. And I feel like it's going to be an even number because we've also left the block in the middle. Oh, God, it's 14. I was right. Uh, but there's clearly a block in the center, though, genius. How's that worked? Seven? Seven. 14 divided by two is seven. He's a genius. Right. Um... <laughs> Odd numbers, eh? Alright, so this is going to be the size of the church. It's going to be a powerful procession. It's going to be a, a man in a robe seeking communion with the divine. Um, except that's going to be Hastur. And instead of a man in the robe, it's going to be Igor. Corn Igor. Oh, it's king in yellow and they're all wearing yellow robes and corn is yellow. I'm playing 4D chess while you, you filthy ningnans are on at least, like, tier... Tier 1 of your, your Hasta spells. Meanwhile, I'm on Tier 4. I'm being dragged to Carcosa with my corn. Meanwhile, we're gathering for a sermon. <laughs> look at them all. They even look like corn. This is so good. Igor has experienced an inspiration. She will move faster for the next 8 days. Probably something to do with the fact that she literally burnt a shit ton of cocaine and inhaled the fumes. Or maybe she didn't inhale. I feel like it's, you have to say that when you lead a, lead a cult, right? Otherwise, they, they turn against you. So... How's the corn farm going? I know you're all asking the same question. Basically, we've just got some tilled fields for now. Apparently, we've got some mushrooms out of it, though. That's nice. We've also got some, got some berries. Some potentially poisonous berries. The church is also underway. Man, I don't know why, but I feel like progress is being made tenfold compared to what we've done in the past 50 episodes. I feel like I've achieved more in just this, this space of about 15 minutes. Oh. Oh, that's good. Does anybody want a nuclear power plant? Because by God, we've just found the fuel for it. Do we have any uranium? Surely we must have some uranium. Um, do my eyes deceive me? So we had 52. That's not actually enough to fuel it, to my knowledge. So that's worked out exceptionally well. It's a gift from Haster himself. This is a state, though. This is, this is kind of a mess. At long last, power. 
Oh my god, we can get some power in the base. This is incredible. Right, okay, power. Let's go geothermal jenny. Let's build one here. Let's build one here. Oh god, it's covering up the entrance to the kill box. Um, in that case... We'll put the door there. Yeah, we'll put the door there. That's, that's not a problem. The downside is... <laughs> the downside is how are we going to shoot at them if we've covered up 90% of the kill box? I may have to readjust... Uh, the kill box somewhat. So I'm thinking, sorry, my fucking life, eh? I'm thinking, we go like this, for a start. Let's go to that. We go like this. We go, uh, we, we remove this. We, 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 we go, hang on, we go like this. Right, bear with. Bear with me here. Um, oh shit, that counts as fucking, oh my lord. Can we build doors there? I wonder if we can build doors there. Okay, we go like that. Then we'll remove these. Select similar, just deconstruct those. Get rid of these doors. Um, I'm actually going to manually drive Yankee Danky. No path? Oh, right, because it's in the middle, right. I'm going to manually drive Yankee Danky and Igor and have those guys work on the killbots, because this is the most important aspect. Um, yeah, it's basically down to these dude to solve things for me. How, how are, you, are you doing all right? Revive by accuracy? I don't really care. So I'm going to try and keep you alive and around and happy, but long enough so I can use you to do my bidding. Now, we're also going to have to build... Oh, God, that's a shame. We're also going to have to build more bridges, basically, everywhere, because all of this area is swampland. Shit. Um, absolutely in awe. Right, so we're going to have to do this. That's fine, though. That's fine. Okay. Um, we're going to dismantle this bit. We're going to get rid of this bit. We're going to go uh, entrance to the kill box, or exit from the kill box. We'll, we'll do this here. That's where p actual our colonists can leave, right? Um, oh, this isn't going to work because of the fucking swamps. Curses, forward again. Alright, hang on. We can we can fix this. Hang on. I can fix this. I will fix this. Watch. Okay, Yankee Danky, it's between you and Eagle Throog right now to get this killbox working and up to date. I don't care that you should be sleeping. I need to sort of force to keep you going here. Alright, down to Eagle. Prioritize working on this. It's the most important aspect, Eagle. Thank you for that. Oh, she's so good, honestly. When no one else listens to me, I can always rely on the Throog. There we go. Okay, uh, do you want to finish these as well? And we need to deconstruct these ones, so we might as well get back our blocks as well. So embrasures use a lot more blocks than walls do. So in theory, we should be able to finish off the wall with the blocks that we get from these embrasures. Just have her deconstruct all of these first. Not the most efficient means of doing it, but I want her to be doing this, because this counts as construction. Tilling the sword counts as construction. So if I don't force her to do this, she'll basically be off, you know, making the grand corn farm, which is fine, because we do need the corn farm being built, but obviously the kill box is life or death scenario. So... This is a little bit more important, in my opinion. Right, that's good. What we'll do then? Bridge, blueprint. We just need a door there. We just need one door. Um, what? Oh, we can build a door there. Thank fuck for that. Right, welcome the bridge. There we go. Uh, you feel free to also chop down this tree. So chop wood, chop wood, chop wood, chop wood. Get rid of all of this. We need this for for door fodder. We also need this because this is going to be the main kill box as well. We're going to expand it all the way down to here. Alright, there we go. Oh, Eagle. You're so good. You are my you are my favorite character, Eagle Throog. Right, work on the bridge. There we go. Man, this is this is gonna be so much better. So much easier when you can just manually do everything, eh? Right, so what we need to do at this stage then is basically take the kill box and expand it out so it's more Oh shit, but that's more fucking swamp. That's really annoying. So we have to build it one block further this way. Yeah, that that's fine. That was okay because we obviously need to leave a gap in it so that the AI can pass through. Um, that's good. Get rid of these. These aren't important. We'll just brick brick over that so it doesn't create a nice little corner for them to hide in. Plus, they're all coming in from a corner. So everybody from this angle, we have a much better um, viewing distance to this area, right? The only downside is we've got this little opening here. So I'm going to block this off as well. Oh, but they could hide behind the corner at that stage. Hmm. They can't move if they're on sandbags, right? So that, that's going to eject them into the sandbox. I think it'll provide cover whilst they're coming up there, but it should eject them out into it. Let's move the sign of Dagon. I'll probably move that into the... No, we'll keep it there. That's fine. Right, Igor. Um, construct these. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So as we deconstruct these, we'll obviously get more blocks out of it because resources have already been delivered there. Gather for a summon. Cancel it. Kill box is more important right now. We're, we're completely vulnerable to any sort of attack. We're not completely vulnerable, but obviously we're, we're quite wide open here for uh, to be shot back at, basically. All right. Sorry, Igor. I'm going to force you beyond uh, what I should be doing here. But it's it's for the purposes of the colony. All right. 
Go and rest. You, you've earned it. Now Yankee Yankee is awake. Digging at limestone. Yankee, I need you to actually finish off the kill box though for me, pal. This is going to be a lot better. I, I just feel like the whole thing's going to work a lot more, more fluidly. What we could even do is cut this area off and have them just pop in here. So that all firepower is going to be focused on... Wait, hang on. They can't stand the limestone chunks, though, either, can they? So would it not make more sense just to use limestone chunks along the entire way? Or just any chunks along the entire way? Would that not make more sense? Because that way it's also not going to provide them cover. Hmm. I'll have to test that out. Where is Yankee Danky? Hey, hurry up. We've got a kill box in these building. Now, we should also replace the floor so it's not got, obviously, plants growing in it or anything. Man, he takes ages compared to Throog. I'm not saying you're a disappointment, but you kind of are. No offense. No offense, Croesus. <laughs> but your character is a bit of a disappointment here. Man, this can take hours. Oh, he's building embrasures. All right, that's that's me being a shit then. Embrasures do take much, much longer to build. Eagle is just building regular old walls. Anybody can build walls, but it takes truly a saint like Yankee Danky to build the marble blocks. Excuse me. Right, okay, let's, dis let's dismantle these embrasures first then. And those will give us more blocks than what we need to build elsewhere. Man, this is going to take a while. Biaki 1 has given birth? We have baby Biaki now? Oh my god, that's horrible. I mean, it's great, but it's horrible. Oh, they've, they've grown full size as well. Of course, why not? Of course they would be. Super horrific. Oh my god, look at Eagle through go. Holy shit. She's so eager to please the Yellow King with a shipment of corn that she's moving beyond what I could see. We need a strobe light to see her right now. Look at this shit. Are you alright, Eagle? Is it, is, it, is it the Yayo? You can tell me if it's the Yayo. Have you got a problem? Then we need to send her to rehab. Oh, to be fair though, she does have this, uh, the, the bear claws, which would help her till soil. Apparently it does. Can't even argue with that. Man, look at this though. She's such a great character. We'll have corn in no time. To be fair, we've actually planted quite a fair amount of corn already. So this is our corn growing zone. Um, it's huge. It's going to give us a shit ton of food. Like, uh, we're never going to have enough food problem again, let's be honest, with all this nutrition kicking around. I'd like to finish off the kill box, but you know what? I'm actually just going to let her till the fields because it needs to be done. So... I mean, the kill box is okay. It's it, it it does its job right now. It does it badly, but it still does it. And once she's finished that, then she can focus on, obviously, the, the, the geothermal generators. We can focus on... Oh, my God. Have we not got enough components? Uh, bamboozled? Huh. Well, that's a bit shit. Um, we haven't had many trade ships lately, either. You have to be careful of that. All right. Keep, just, just someone keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that we haven't had many trade ships. Because those guys are what we need to... Uh... Oh, he's bringing components over. Where did you find those? We've got 8 out of 8 now. <gasps> we can pass some turrets. Oh, this is good. Okay, right. Um, Security? We've only got many turrets. Oh, those are so bad. Those are like seriously, seriously crap. Um, Gun complexes, those are good though. Those might not be a bad idea for those with low shooting stat. Unfortunately, it's time for me to leave. Thank you, everybody. A shelf is trapped in... Oh, damage beyond repair. God damn it. Okay, we need to prioritize repairing because that's going to get annoying if I forget about those traps needing redoing. We've got extra power. We've got two geothermal generators. Well, okay. We've got like one and th five, four bits geothermal generators built there. The great corn farm is finished. Thank you for watching. I can't wait to send all this corn to Haster himself so that he can take us to Carcosa. We're, we're buying our entry. We're lobbying. We're lobbying Haster. A big shout out to my insane top tier level patrons, Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Jackson Whitman, Escape, Croesus, James Ogilvy, Conspire Team, Necrophilum, Michael Mullen, Haydog, Orkswolf, Jocelyn, Dean, Tesla, and Logan Thorne for their support, the insane tier levels on Patreon. Thank you all very much for that. And of course, a big shout out to Nathaniel Limburg, Facundo Vasquez, Felix Seal, Quet Lutchley, Brandon Mintoniak, Pearl Master, Everqueen is Waifu, Quasar Fox, Jonas Jess Villerton, Chris, Joseph Fierce, Hathor the Swede, Nick, Sedini, Asro, Jack Allen, Chancellor Chief Palpatine, Euphrates, Jordan Campbell, You're on the Breeze, I'm the Lizard King, Don Connie 2 and 7, and the many, many others over at Patreon. Thank you all for your support. It's much appreciated. I will see you next episode. What a lot of good progress.